From endless crop fields to fertile tide pools, from lively streams and creeks to teeming wetlands, from granite cliffs and rugged shorelines to long sandy beaches and untamed surf, from sunlit kelp forests to thriving seafloor and midnight canyon depths. This is your sanctuary. Hello, I'm Paul Michel, superintendent of the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary and host of Your Sanctuary, a program about connecting people and communities to the wonders and resources of our National Marine Sanctuaries. Today's program is about an area of the sanctuary most people never get a chance to see or explore, the seafloor. You know, most people think of the seafloor as this barren wasteland, but in fact, it's teeming with life. And with me today is Dr. Andrew de Vogelaire. Dr. de Vogelaire is the research coordinator for the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Welcome aboard, Andrew. It's another beautiful evening in the Monterey Harbor. So you're the research coordinator. What's it like to be the research coordinator? What is it that you exactly that you do? Sometimes I wonder, Paul, you know, there's always something exciting and different every day. Uh, it could be that today a ship sinks, it could be that we have to make a decision about laying a cable, it could be there's some water quality issue, but it's my job and my team and the scientists in the region to gather the scientific information to help people make sound decisions. And uh, the way we could do that is it could be that something that we learn in school, uh, we might have to go on the internet and look at the scientific literature to get the information. To make a good decision, or it might be that we actually have to set up a new experimental study to understand what's going on so we do the right thing. You know, we talk a lot about in the office you know, mapping the sanctuary or characterizing the habitats. And what does that mean? Why do we need to characterize the habitats? Well, that is a big deal. Um, I think a lot of people are familiar with uh, road maps. And when you look at a road map um, along the coastline in Monterey and you look offshore, all you see is blue. Well, that doesn't do us much good in the sanctuary office. I remember one time when I first started working there, um, a plane went down, unfortunately, in the northern part of the bay, and I was asked what the impact would be. So I knew roughly where it was, I could guess how deep it was, and I called up a friend who I knew did some deep water research and said, what might be living down there? But we've come so far from that. Now we, uh, we know how deep it is, we know what the bottom looks like um, in fine detail in terms of depth, we know if it's rocky or mud, and uh, so we have a lot of better feel of what the habitats are, but the new thing now is actually having images and overlaying them and knowing what species are living in these areas. So, um, when we have a nice map of what the habitats are, uh, what species are there, and sort of how they interact, then we have what's known as a characterization of the sanctuary, and that's basic information. If you're going to run a cable through an area and you want to know what the impacts are, you better know what's there. Wow. Wow. So how do we get to the seafloor to even know what's going on there? Well, that's another thing. The technology is really changing. Uh, even back in the 70s, what uh, geologists used to do is just drag some chains along the bottom and just see what rocks come up. Uh, a lot of times it was just dragging nets, but now the, the tip of the spear technology is going out into the sea with these uh, submersibles uh, that don't have humans in them. They're called autonomous underwater vehicles. They're like torpedoes. They're programmed and they go on certain paths and they take pictures or take water samples or actually use sound uh, that they emits from them and bounces back and they can tell how hard or soft the bottom is. So we can use these AUVs. Uh, we also have uh, uh, remotely operated vehicles which are robots on a tether. They have nice cameras and arms that we can manipulate to pick things up and take pictures of. Uh, they are still submersibles, manned submersibles. So I've gotten to go in a little yellow submarine before uh, called a Delta Sub. Uh, but we, we've mostly been using here in our office and from our ship, the Fulmar, is what we call our towed camera sled. And we, lo we lower this sled uh, off the ship and we can move pretty quickly in whatever direction we want. And um, it's sending video of what the bottom looks like uh, to the surface and then we can record that and, uh, and count and describe everything that we see. 
I've seen some of that video footage. It is really amazing. Uh, what are some of the things that we're learning now about the seafloor? <clears throat> well, um, you know, we're learning a lot uh, because um, it's the first time we're getting good imagery from down there. Uh, we're learning that um, when you see the seafloor in your mind's eye, it's not just an extension of the beach, mm -hmm. right? A sandy beach that just goes deeper and deeper and deeper, and you can see some rolling sand and, and you know, maybe a few things on it. We're finding out that it's very diverse in habitat down there. We have deep, steep canyons. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seamounts that come up. We have boulder areas. We have... Uh, um, small small rock pebbly areas we have muddy areas and um, living on all of those things are um, are beautiful creatures i think a lot of people are familiar with what they see in the fish market but there's a lot more to the seafloor than that there's a uh, beautiful you know pom-pom anemones and there are these things called velcro stars and ratfish and um, all sorts of unique creatures down there and um, what we're learning is that the seafloor is diverse and that it's beautiful. Wow. So where can we see some of this imagery? Is there a, a place that we can go to see some pictures? And how do we share this information with others? Yeah, I think that that's where we've been uh, innovative here at the sanctuary and working with uh, Cal State Monterey Bay, mm -hmm. uh, their Institute for Applied Marine Ecology. We want to uh, share this scientific information with the public, with decision makers, so that they don't have to go to the library and, and read a long paper. Um, you know, that, that's important to have, but people like imagery. Uh, so uh, with CSUMB and the iFame Lab, we've generated this uh, program that we used to call the Sanctuary Characterization and Image Display Map. Uh, but now we've changed it to the Shelf Characterization Image Display SCID because so many people have wanted to use our system beyond the sanctuary. But essentially what it is, is it's an online interactive map. Anybody can go there. Uh, see a map of the sanctuary, focus in on certain areas, uh, see exactly where we've gone with our camera sled on some lines, and then click on their favorite spot, and then we'll have pictures and short video clips of whatever's there. And we found that uh, when we share that at meetings, when a decision maker says, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's take on this activity, we can do some dredging here, it's only sand, and we can show a video that has hundreds of thousands of brittle stars with their arms in the air filter feeding, people all of a sudden start thinking differently about what's happening at the bottom. It's not just a sandy area. There's hundreds of thousands of creatures down there. I think what struck me most about learning about the seafloor is that you know, many people think the seafloor could be just this barren wasteland, and actually it's teeming with life. And so that's something we should share with the public and with other scientists. And we actually have some great video footage and some imagery to share right now. I'm hoping you could stick around and kind of walk us through it. But sure, let's check it out. It'll okay, be, should be fun. let's go to the video. There are beautiful colors in the deep sea, even though it's dark. This finger-like animal is a deep sea coral. The Velcro star is also known as the fish-eating star. It has microscopic pinchers on its surface that'll capture fish and then it'll eat them. The spotted ratfish is related to sharks. They don't have bones. Instead of bones, they have cartilage. The mushroom soft coral is beautiful. Come to our exploration center this summer. We're going to have a model of it on display. In the deep sea, there is also lots of sponges. Here you can see a blue rockfish using sponges as a living space or habitat. The hagfish, also known as a slime eel, is captured here off central California, shipped to Korea, and they make wallets out of them. The pom-pom anemone will roll along the seafloor in the currents as a way to get around to different places. The long-nosed skate is actually prey to the large sperm whale. The thorny headfish, here you can see it's located with some sea cucumbers that are buried under the soft sediment, and those are their tentacles reaching out to capture fine particles for food. These two feather stars are being approached by a spiny king crab. This sandpaper skate 
is an interesting story because it's the first time that anyone's detected deep sea leeches on this species. You can see the fine worms on its skin. The sanctuary hosts 1,276 reported shipwrecks and 718 prehistoric sites. I'm Dr. Andrew DeVogelaire with the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Come join me on an exciting expedition to the Davidson Seamount. Just 93 miles west of this visitor center, there's a huge undersea mountain. It's in dark, cold water, but it's teeming with exotic sea life. Davidson Seamount is 26 miles long and 8 miles wide. Its base is nearly 12,000 feet deep, and its peak is over 4,000 feet below the ocean surface. It last erupted 9.8 million years ago, and now provides habitat for diverse, spectacular species, like these fishes, anemones, tunicates, and sponges. Many species are bigger and slow growing in the deep sea. These sponges are two feet tall and are living space for even more species. Deep sea corals can grow eight feet tall and some are hundreds of years old, fragile and in need of protection. We found new species that have yet to be named, like this mystery mollusk. As we complete our dive to Davidson Seamount, we realize that it's a new frontier for discovery and inspires us with a sense of wonder for the Earth. The seafloor is a remarkable environment and it's quite challenging to study. Fortunately for us, the waters of Monterey Bay are some of the most researched and studied in the world. Joining us right now is Dr. James Lindholm with California State University Monterey Bay. James is director for the Institute of Applied Marine Ecology or IFAME. James, thanks so much for having us in your lab today. Yeah, thanks it's for coming. It's a thrill Paul. to be here. Thanks for coming, Paul. Tell us about IFAME's mission and the motivation behind the focus on marine issues and policy. So that's a great question. So the motivation comes from the fact that I used to be one of you. I used to work for the federal government. And one of the things I experienced at that point was this huge disconnect between the federal government, what the, the, the federal government needed, mm -hmm. and what the academic scientists were doing. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the primary goal of IFAME is to bridge that gap, to conduct mm -hmm. science, where that directly informs the managers in a way that make, that helps them do their job most effectively. Great. So you're what's one of us. Yes. So you've uh, evolved, I guess. I, you could say that. Yes. <laughs> so you have a lot of projects uh, that focus on the Monterey Bay Sanctuary. Tell us about this research partnership with the sanctuary. Well, it's been a great partnership. I think we're in our fifth year now, and one of the things we've been doing is basically exploring the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. You know, the sanctuary is held in the people's interest. I know you know that. I'm preaching in the choir. Um, and what we've been doing is helping to systematically explore the sanctuary and understand what's there. Kind of the minimum standard is what's there and showing that to the people, so which we're going to talk about in a little while. Yeah. So a number of projects in the sanctuary, but where else are you studying? We're also working up and down the coast. We're working as far up in the Northern California. We just get, came back from a cruise down in Southern California, working in the Gulf of Maine off the state of Massachusetts, oh. down in the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. And we just came back from a project that we're beginning in South Africa. So we're, wow. we're engaged all over the place. One of the things you do is create and develop some amazing tools that help us understand and visualize what the seafloor looks like. And right now we're in your lab and you have some folks working on things. One of the products that I'm most interested in is this uh, visualization technique or EcoViz. 
Can you talk to us about what that's about and, and how that came to be? Sure. We're very fortunate to be working here at CSUMB. One of my colleagues designed a software for visualizing scientific data mm -hmm. in real time. And so what we've been doing with each of our projects, including the one most recently in the sanctuary, is producing a visualization that kind of takes people underwater. You know, mm -hmm. one of the challenges in the sanctuary is it's deep. And so visualization, visualizations like this allow us to bring the viewer with us mm -hmm. underwater and the most effectively to show them what it looks down, that, down there and to give them a, a sense of how we conduct the science. That's so important, too, in terms of uh, connecting people to the marine environment. If we can show them what it looks like, then they'll begin to understand it and care about it. That's absolutely right. That's our goal here at IFAM, is to render the water column transparent oh. so, that the, mm -hmm. so that the public can come with us on our mm -hmm. daily activities. That's great. One of the uh, products also that I'm really excited about is this shelf characterization identification. Uh, skid. Tell us about that, what that's like. So that's another extension of the EcoViz where in this case we're collecting thousands of still photos on all our work with the sanctuary and hundreds of hours of video and it takes us months to years to analyze those data mm -hmm. but one of the, our goals in getting that information or the visualizations out to the public as quick as possible is we've created a website through which we can put those still photos and video clips up on the web very quickly after a cruise so the public, the managers, other scientists can see what it looks like right where we went. So a user could actually point to a place on a map, click on it, and you get an image or a piece of video of what that seafloor looks like. Basically, that's right. Um, the, the images are constrained to places where we went, so, mm -hmm. but there are, so that you'll see the transect lines, so you also get a sense of where we're doing the science. Mm -hmm. So we, where we lay out the lines, we fly the ROV or a camera set along that line, and along those lines are where the clips and, the, and images will be. Wow. So why don't you take us to one of these places on the seafloor with your staff and uh, your tools that you're working on. Sounds great. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay, so thanks, Paul. So this is the Shelf Characterization and Image Display website, or SCID, which was developed in conjunction with our ongoing um, work with the Sanctuary, the Institute for Applied Marine Ecology here, as well as the Sanctuary. So this is what we call the splash screen, where you, the first thing you'll see when you, when you access the site and the best way to start is to start SCID, the red button. SCID will pop up with a screen that should expand to fill whatever, whatever um, monitor you're using. And there are some instructions here in the center for, for the first time viewers to the area. The first thing you'll do is select a study area. So these are the main areas from the northern part of the sanctuary, Año Nuevo, down to the southern part of the sanctuary. I'm going to select Carmel Bay, Point Lobos. Then you can select the instrument, which um, we're sampled with. In this case, I'll choose the towed camera sled. And then you can select the media. We collect video and still photos like I was describing, and you can choose either of those. So I'll choose video. So now you've seen um, all these little, the, the little teardrops, and let me zoom in a little bit. So here you see the blue lines represent the transects where we've gone with the camera, the towed camera sled. This is Point Lobos here for a point of reference. And each of these teardrops represents a video clip. If you click on one of those, um, a window like this will pop up in YouTube and you can watch a, a small 20 to 30 sec clip. Here we see a rock wall offshore of Point Lobos. And if you look, you can see a whole, the, the, the wall is virtually covered with feather stars. They're sitting attached to the rock, sticking their arms up in the water and grabbing bits of food out of the water column. And this is what it looks like when we're cruising along with, in this case, a towed camera sled along the bottom. One of the things we do is spend a lot of time in both hard bottom as well as soft bottom habitats. Here you see a sea pen sitting on the soft bottom. Many people often refer to the, the, the muddy sand offshore as a desert. And in fact, what we find is there's a great number of living things there, and we see them frequently, and they're all visible here in Skid. One of the rationales, the driving rationales for SCID, in addition to giving visuals to the public, is that as a, as a scientist engaged in, in the interface of um, science with policy and management, I've sat around a, a number of tables where people were charged with managing the seafloor and they didn't actually know what the seafloor looked like that they were managing. And one, so one of our goals here is to have a quick reference point. So as people are sitting around tables discussing things, they have, a, they have a, a quick opportunity to look down and kind of ground truth their understanding of what the bottom looks like. 
Okay, so Paul, you wanted to see a, an example of one of our visualizations. This is a visualization we produced a couple years ago in association with the sanctuary to kind of highlight both the science that we're conducting underwater and the images um, that we get to see. So you start from above. Here you see the northern boundary of the sanctuary. Here we come flying into Monterey Bay, zooming in closer to Point Lobos. Now you see the transect lines. And we're going to zoom into the Fulmar, the sanctuary's vessel from which we've been using throughout the partnership to study the seafloor. Fulmar is a great platform for doing this type of work. Here you see the camera sled. There's the crew of the Fulmar, as well as some of our iFame scientists lowering the camera sled into the water. Once it's in, it's attached to the, it's attached to the boat by a tether and it's deployed down to the seafloor. Here you see the yellow line that we're flying along the bottom. That's our transect. And this is, the, this is projected over the actual bottom maps of the seafloor conducted, um, uh, provided by my colleague here, Dr. Rika Rigtek at, at the Seafloor Mapping Lab. If we zoom in, we transition to some actual video. So here's um, some hard bottom. Here you see the different types of information that are provided on the video. And you see a rock wall covered with feather stars. We have some rockfish here, olive and yellowtail rockfishes hanging out above the rocks. This is the type of um, video we collect on a regular basis, hundreds of hours of this video, which we will then sit down and analyze on a frame-by-frame -frame basis as you see the sled take off and um, zip along the remainder of its transect. So a transect like this usually will last about an hour. We'll collect um, 60 continuous minutes of video and somewhere between 150 and 300 still photographs of this type of environment. Encompassing 6,094 square miles, the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary protects an area larger than the state of Connecticut. Well, it's time once again for our weekly sea creature call-in. Let's see who we have on the line. Hello, this is Superintendent Paul Michel. Don't you dare put me on hold again, you scallywag! Hey, sorry for any delay. Welcome to your sanctuary. What can I do for you? Well, I'm Kurt, and I'm a crab. Not just any crab, mind you, but a decorator crab. Whoa, now that's cool. What, what's going on? Yeah, well, I've been hearing a lot about oceans becoming more acidic. Sounds horrible. Makes me shed a shiver just thinking about it. What's up with that? Well, Kurt, you know, scientists who study ocean chemistry are very worried about our oceans getting more acidic due to air pollution dissolving into seawater and making the water more acidic. Even a slight increase in acidity can harm shell-forming animals just like yourself. For the love of Popeye, that's very troubling, mate. I'm not feeling the love from up there, people. What am I supposed to do? Get a porcelain shell? Well, I'm very sorry, Kurt, but we are studying the problem, and people are becoming more informed about pollution and trying to reduce, reuse, and recycle carbon. That's the main culprit here. Well... I'm feeling okay now, but you better keep working on this ocean acidification thing or me and my boys are going to come up there and start pinching. Okay, okay, Kurt. Now, don't go cracking up on me. Yeah, well, other than that, everything's going all right down on the seafloor. You have to drop on down sometime and say hello. All right, Kurt, will do. Well, time's run out on the call. Thanks for reaching out. I a two-legged fish hugger! Pinch, 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 pinch. Well, that's it for this week's Sea Creature Call-In. Approximately 9 million people live within 25 miles of the sanctuary. Well, that's it for today's program. Since your sanctuary is about connecting people and communities to our National Marine Sanctuaries, we want to hear from you. Please email us at yoursanctuary at ampmedia.org. And thanks for watching.
presentation of your sanctuary is made possible in part by the Cannery Row Company, Gateway to the Monterey Bay.